guess I don't really need this. Uh, is everybody hearing me? Mm. Okay. Uh, actually, this uh, introduction by Professor, and uh, the views expressed by Professor Alkin gives me a very good uh, position to start here because I can directly comment on what he has said. Uh, I have been associated with uh, not only the Scandinavian Journal, but also two other journals, um, Mathematics of Operating Research, and that's a Tim Orsa journal, and then uh, Stochastic Processing and, and Their Applications, which is uh, a North Holland journal, uh, but it's also uh, under the auspices, as it's formulated, of the Bernoulli Society. The Scandinavian journal, on the other hand, is, is published by four societies, the uh, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, and Finnish statistical societies, but there's a, a, a commercial publisher also uh, used Amquist and Excel International. I think this, simply this collection of three journals shows that, that the division is not quite so clear cut. You really have a spectrum. You have, uh, I think, stochastic is really the prime example of, of something run by the uh, publisher, I've talked to Mark Davis, uh, who is the editor of Stochastics, and, and complained to him about the price. Currently, I think there is one department that subscribes in Finland for Stochastics, uh, and that is the University of Helsinki. I never even started, never even considered. Uh, I would put, by the way, Springer to the next better, uh, to this medium, category, because really I think Zeitschrift, the Wahrscheinlichkeit theory of Verwandte Gebiete, whatever its name, theory, probability and theory and related fields is, is very, very expensive and, and, and would definitely go into the first category. Anyway, I think there is a, a spectrum of different arrangements and, and it can be that, that there is a society like in, in North Poland, Bernoulli Society, uh, the question is more, I think, who owns the journal, so to speak? Who is determining the price? And not only that, but also, how big is the society? So what influence actually has the, the, the membership on the price? Because if you have a large society, then uh, the members will more or less automatically buy a significant number of, of copies and thereby you can, uh, the production cost will be more or less covered by those prices. That gives a lot of, of, of flexibility. Here I see a, a definite difference, uh, say, in the, between uh, the annals or even more of JASA that have thousands of members and say this Scandinavian journal, uh, we have uh, four relatively small uh, Scandinavian societies. And, and many of the members in these societies are not interested in mathematical statistics. So asking them for a compulsory subscription is, is, is not a good idea, because they will simply reject that and, and not, not go with it. So uh, I think there's really a, 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 a not such a clear cut division, but a, a, a spectrum of arrangements I'm in sympathy with the uh, views expressed by, by Ingram Alkin here. Uh, we should definitely try to, uh, to foster the idea of, of, of society journals. And, and I think the societies, particularly if they have a large membership, they can control what the publisher does, even if the publisher, if there is a commercial publisher uh, collaborating publication. Now, but there's, there are certain limits to what, what, can do, what one can do. Another thing I just want to add to this list is, is uh, okay, let me just mention one thing. I'm not sure people here would agree. We in Oulu have a, a system where the departments, in fact, decide what the, what the libraries get. So we have a mathematics and physics library, for example, all statistics journals go into that library and it is a departmental decision to decide what journals uh, are subscribed each year. 
Uh, if we cancel a subscription, then we simply notify other departments who might be potentially interested. But the library, in fact, has no say in, in, in what journals. It is our money, we buy, we tell the others what we are getting. And so it is, it is up to, it's never ever debate going on between the librarians and, and, and the, the faculty. And I think this is a fairly good system. Uh, I think the librarians are reasonably happy with that too. Uh, I'd like to add one thing here. Um, geography. And, uh, I've only been briefly uh, receiving the manuscripts of the Scandinavian Journal as of uh, January this year, so I don't have much exposure to this phenomenon yet. But there's, there's something very clear um, happening, and, and that is that, well, okay, the journal has a name, Scandinavian Journal of Statistics, and one might wonder what implication that actually has uh, to the submission of the manuscripts, to the handling of the manuscripts, and to the acceptance um, um, and, and rejections of other manuscripts. It, it's quite interesting, actually, what happens. We are getting much more manuscripts from outside Scandinavia. Something like, I think, um, I have some statistics from the <coughs> previous editor, Sir Hansen, Something like two-thirds are coming from elsewhere than, than Scandinavia. Now, does this mean that, that uh, also something like two-thirds are, uh, of the published papers are from authors outside Scandinavia? No. Does this mean that we are biased and, and are more likely to accept papers that are coming from the Scandinavian countries. Now, this is something one might wonder about. My answer is, is, is no, or at least we try not to be. But it's, it's very clear in my mind that we are getting a lot of, of, of second, third, fourth submissions from outside Scandinavia. People probably have tried the annals or some other journal like that, and if they fail, then they send the journal to the, uh, the paper to the Scandinavian journal, and then we have to uh, process that paper, <coughs> decide what to do with that. This is the way I, I, I see the current situation. I don't think it is just this question between regional and international, which is also very... All journals appear somewhere. They are edited by some people. There's always some hole for the journal. So if not Scandinavia, then something else. But also I think there's a, there's a difference, or there are differences in the culture. The authors behave differently. In the United States in particular, there's this publish or perish tradition. And, and there's, there's an enormous drive towards publishing more and more papers, and, and often very short, with one contribution, maybe no contribution whatsoever. In, in the Nordic countries, and I'm, I guess, most familiar with the situation in Finland, the opposite is true. People do not dare somehow to send their manuscripts to journals. Uh, many just leave their, their papers, even if they are reasonable, in the research report for it, and hope that some people would then read those. So there's somehow, there's, there's lack of manuscripts from, um, the Nordic countries, and, and there is an excess of manuscripts, quality manuscripts from outside. This, I guess, is, is not <coughs> the case always. But I, I, I would think that, that, that every country, even big countries like the United States, have some kind of, of uh, well, somehow they, they are facing geography. Yeah. The fact that, that, that they are surrounded by, by certain universities, academia, traditions, libraries, and so on. And so both the submissions and, <coughs> uh, and the demand somehow are, are regulated by that. 
Let me uh, mention one thing with, uh, which is also, uh, as a last point, which is also connected with geography. Uh, now, there is this area that is still a while ago called East Europe, or Eastern Europe. I have traveled uh, in those countries a little bit. I've seen their libraries. Uh, and, and the impression I have had is, is that, yes, they had enormous difficulty in, in obtaining Western journals. Uh, it could be that, that there is, uh, is one copy in the country, like we have Ostogastics, but I mean, <laughs> all the more obvious journals, there might be some, some academy of science or some one university, and, and people travel by train long distances to read that journal. Of course, yeah, copying machines are, 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 have not been there. Now, well, this has been, for example, in the, in the Soviet Union. And, and, and also, I know that, for example, in Berlin, Humboldt University and Akademie der Wissenschaften, maybe they don't have double copies, so they, they go to each other to read the journals. Mm -hmm. uh, so, somehow the, the governments have been very, very tough on using exchange of the currencies to, to get journals. I think unreasonably so. So, they have had difficulty in getting sort of our journals. On the other hand, and this would have been resolved, I think, much more easily, people in the West could have bought the so-called Eastern journals very cheaply, but often have not. And this is, is I think, uh, somehow, uh, it's, it's a question of culture. The bigger the, the sort of local environment is, and the biggest local scientific environment is that of the United States, the more easily do People think that, that we are self so sufficient. We don't have to know about what they do there. And, and I think this is an important issue, that, and now that things are opening up, I think it will, it's getting increasingly important to know what is going on. And, and the journals, and we sh as, as, as scientists, should help people <coughs> in this what used to be East Europe uh, or um, socialist countries, when they're opening up, I think there will be tremendous amount of information available. And, and I said that they've had difficulty in, in obtaining information from the West. But I think it's obvious that, that, or my impression is, that even more they have been willing to get their results known in the West. And, and, and so this means that there's a, there's a process, and there's a long time development. If they intend and want to publish in the West, they have to learn to write in the way that the readers in the Western journals uh, find useful, find understandable. So it, it, it takes a long time. I just think that, that people who are in the editorial business should face this, this thing very seriously and, and, and give a helping hand so that somehow these things come and level. I think they've had a real difficulty, real hard time. If you now see, like just we got the, the, the IMS bulletin, I got it maybe yesterday or the day before, and look at Uppsala program, you see a long list of, of speakers from, from Bucharest, so they're all coming. The old names you knew <laughs> were there. They are, they are now coming to the West, and, and they want to communicate. It's clear. And I, I think this is, is, a, is a real uh, challenge to the people in the editorial world. This is really I, 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 all I have to say, uh, except that, that uh, I think it's more useful to hear uh, comments and, and wishes from the floor than, than from people uh, doing the editorial work. This is way, I think, uh, what, the, what the journals really end up publishing is, is um, mostly dependent on what manuscripts are submitted, what, what the, the profession really wants, less a function of what the editors end up doing. 